Hello everyone, welcome back to Silver Tears Tarot and welcome to our peek into the month of May. So um, we're going to go ahead and take a look just overall at the month from a soulmate perspective, what kind of energies are heading your direction. So it's going to be a general reading for this collective. Won't resonate with everyone, shouldn't resonate with everyone, but if it does resonate with you, um, to stick around, hit subscribe. Um, if it helps you, hit like so that it can help other people. And um, maybe also maybe go back and take a look at some of the other readings that have come out so far because they're all very much connected. And so um, if, you, if you find this helpful, there may be other helpful messages. Um, so we're going to go ahead and jump in and just kind of look at what the energy for May looks like. And we're coming out of a very interesting, <laughs> a very interesting uh, April. And so right off the bat, we get the Four of Cups in the reverse, which if you were here yesterday, you've seen this card and it comes out meaning the same thing. Basically, this sense of something coming to you um, that feels like it. It's bigger than you expect it to be. It surprises you. It's a little bit of a surprise. Um, you thought it was going to kind of just be something very boring. And you may find that you don't find it boring at all. So we've seen a lot in these last few readings. So if you are new here, um, you got a lot to catch up on. Ooh, what is that? Ten of Pentacles? Awesome. Awesome. That's your household, folks. That's your life. That's your lifestyle looking very orderly, looking very much like it's um, like it's growing. So this is a good thing because you have a lot happening. You have new things coming into your life, new soulmates coming into your life, and you have developments happening with this existing soulmate um, that we've we've seen. Um, got, they've gotten very intense here in the last few days you know yesterday I woke up with the I was going to do this reading but I woke up and um there was this ache in the energy like this terrible ache in the energy uh oh still there um felt like they could barely think through it you know and so much of a desire to communicate that as I was doing the reading I had to pull out what I like to call um, my guilty pleasure decks that I basically have never used on this chan channel before. Um, so if you missed that, you might want to go back and check out yesterday's reading and the extended because I used two different ones um, that kind of brought forth two different types of messages. But generally speaking, if you're new, you just want to get caught up. So it looks like May is a month of building yourself an even better life out of something that you realize is pretty good. Um, so there may be some new perspectives coming in here where you're realizing that something is pretty good. Uh, with the Five of Swords, there is a tendency to tear yourself down. So watch out for this because that ends up being a self-destructive sort of energy. Now, the fact that there is so much surprise here, I think, kind of counteracts this self-destructive energy to a certain degree. And that's part of why you see so much growth in the Pentacles. And that's in that material sort of energy. Um this is not just you. This is not just your energy. This is the overall energy of the month. So it's going to be true for your person as well. So you may see them benefiting depending on how close you are and what you can see. Still got some things happening. So in yesterday's reading, if you um, if you saw that, there was this Ten of Wands talking about having something that, that needed to finish running its course. Here with the sun, it's about this... Oh, gosh, how did I put it? Maybe it was yesterday. Um, I think I said it yesterday, but it had something to do with um, your person realizes on some level that they're on a collision course with happiness. Okay, so they realize that this happiness is that's the sun and that's the card that it came out whenever it came out, um, which I think was the day before yesterday. It came out looking like they are there's light at the end of the tunnel. But there are some things that still have to run their course. And with that, the healing isn't quite done. Um, with the Nine of Wands, there is still a feeling of resistance or reluctance or defensiveness working through some of these things that are still coming down the pike. And it's like 
things that have been initiated that it's like a class that you start that you just have to see it through, you know. Um, but it's not necessarily something that you are any more super excited about or that they are excited about anymore. This is energy that's wrapped around both of you. So it's a sense of the right thing to do is to complete something, even though maybe your heart isn't truly in it. But there is something great here about new passions. So we see this coming out in the readings for you about passion that's happening, new soulmates coming, um, it, this there's a there's something about a new soulmate that um you're crossing paths with you know or you're ramping up with a soulmate that has already maybe crossed your path you're figuring it out um and it, it had like this earth shattering sort of feeling to it so the universe is just kind of waiting for you to figure this out there's there's something here where you haven't been given all the information so it's not like you're being slow on the uptake but there's a lot of potential for letting go which is part of what we saw in yesterday's extended is what's happening with this um, with this soulmate. It's teaching you to let go, but it's there's so much passion here. I don't think you miss anything. I don't think you walk away um, feeling like you are getting less. I think you walk away feeling like you're getting more, but you may feel very challenged. With this Eight of Pentacles here, it's a feeling of not quite being able to... Um, not being in charge or not not is not in charge it's not being in control of the emotions so there's a lot of fear and a lot of fear while it feels like things are moving very quickly this is a feeling of almost just getting off balance because things are moving so quickly and feeling um maybe a little bit less confident as a result of things moving really quickly it's like stepping up to a new level on a video game and not feeling like confident at that new level just yet. So things are moving really fast. Not necessarily that anything is going wrong, just that it feels like it's coming at them really quickly. Then we also have the High Priestess and the Two of Wands. Um, the High Priestess and the Two of Wands are really going to be about having been shown the information to make a new decision. The Two of Wands is having to cross the threshold of that decision or having to get to the place where you're able to see from this new perspective so it truly is about coming around those corners where I was saying that there was something that had to run its course I was saying that there is information that you don't yet have um, and so it's not your fault that you haven't figured this out just yet but there are some things that you haven't just you haven't figured them out the information is coming to you. So keep yourself open to it. But then you have to use that information to kind of get to this better place. So the Two of Wands is using the information to get to that better place where the High Priestess in the reverse is getting the information that is going to be the building blocks. It's going to be what you use to get there. Um, so May is a month of growth. It's a month of realizing that things are maybe a little bit bigger than what you initially thought or a little bit more... Um, Things are of different sizes. You have some things that maybe you thought were going to be huge that are not, but you have to wait for them to run their course. And then you have some other things that you came in and you did just because it was required and you discover now, oh my goodness, this is maybe the best thing since sliced bread. It's really pretty fantastic. Ultimately, even though you still have to kind of get on board with it, make sure you're opening your mind to this so that you're not so limiting yourself that you aren't able to think these things through as they come to you. Um, and to accept what they, what they have to give you really. Um, cause there's a lot of growth that stands to happen here. And as you, you're like, you're going to be somewhat close to it just because out of some sort of habit, but as you figure it out and you open yourself up, you're going to say, Oh, I can still reap the benefit of this. Maybe there's some benefit that's behind you that you can't get, but, um, there's something very positive as you're working into this, but I think that eight of pentacles kind of talks about the fact that it speaks to the fact that it feels like it's, um, hard to learn in time. And then the eight of, um, the eight of wands here, I couldn't say wands, um, the eight of wands talks to how quickly the energy is moving. And so it feels like it comes at you to the point where you're worried about missing opportunities and in so doing kind of missing additional ones because there's that sense of being very nervous about it or spending too much energy on it um let's go ahead and look into what we can expect 
for the month of May. So if we think back to April, um, well, if we think back a little bit farther, even in March, remember we had your person kind of trying not to communicate, but feeling like they had to, not really being true to themselves, trying to keep those emotions held down, um, being told to go into that hermit cave, find some wisdom. So we saw a lot of that continuing through April. Um, definitely kind of still feeling like that need to try and communicate, but this time it was like this energy of an open and welcoming sort of energy that really started to come out. Um, and just like you just got here, there was that recommendation for you to stay open and not limit yourself. Um, so you're kind of, you're being, you were being asked to let go of something in April. I remember that. Um, now here, I don't know if you're going to be asked to let go of something, but it's definitely going to be in that. Uh, there's some need to find that wisdom like we were hearing about back in um, back in March. So there was probably some interaction. There was interaction with a lot of you. Conversation was very likely in April. Um, we have the Nine of Cups here in May, and that is that is figuring out the realities of some situations. So it's getting down to brass tacks. It's thinking about things in a very concrete sort of way because of the emotions behind it. So getting logical because of the emotions. The Nine of Cups is uncomfortable emotion that sort of drives them into a place where they are... Um, they're forced to reconcile something. Your person will be forced to reconcile something. Uh, you may get a little bit of that too. A forced reconciliation that feels uncomfortable, but I feel like you just walk away and go, okay, well, I guess I get it now. I guess I understand better now. Um, it ends up being a positive thing. You have the Three of Cups. This is opportunity for celebration. It is also heavy third party energy. So I, I talked in what yesterday's reading, I think it was um, the three of cups came out and I was really excited about it being opportunity and something positive and celebration, celebratory sorts of energy. And um, as, as opposed to being this sort of third party energy that often comes out when we think of the three of cups or when we see the three of cups in these readings here i'm really seeing both but with the three of cups um with regard to the third party it's about the lessons it's about really truly understanding i now understand what i what it is that i don't want you know it's a reckoning there's something here that feels like um it becomes very final whereas we've seen we've seen some places where maybe enough of a shift has occurred that it shows up like things are never going to be the same again. This goes um, a step beyond that to say that there is a shift that is very much a material type of shift. It's something that happens as a result of an emotional shift, perhaps, um, but that changes the shape of the life. Some of this has already come into play um, during the month of April. We've already seen that. We've seen households shifting shapes and sizes and things like that. Uh, so we got the Six of Pentacles here in the reverse. What I'm not sure about is whether they go in a right direction um, right off the bat. Because I kind of have this feeling like there's a bit of a, a bit of self-destruction maybe that pops up for this person. So watch out for the self-destruction. Watch out for that sense of not really listening to things that make sense. So people pulling them aside and saying, I want to be able to help you here or even watch for it to happen for you. If somebody stages some sort of intervention, make sure you listen, whether it's, you know, the mildest intervention you've ever seen or maybe the heaviest. Make sure you listen because there's something here um, and it's, I'm especially getting it for your person. But since you're listening, I want you to have the message, too. There may be um, a strong tendency to just kind of miss something for a while. And then eventually it, it hits you and you're like, oh, my goodness, how did I not, you know, how did I not realize that? So recognize there may be something of that nature. Um, it may be a challenge to keep things balanced because of the num the nature of the change that's coming um, but I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. I think you get into the swing of things with the spirit of cups here. I think you get into the swing of things and are a, 
a kind of a champion of some of the change that's happening. So it may not be something that you came up with or that you would have come up with, but maybe you are part of what helps your person get through it or you're part of what helps other people get through some of the change that we see happening in May. Definitely some wrapping up of the cycle. There's something that has been trying to wrap itself up, trying to end for some time, and it's been very difficult for that to take place. So we're finally seeing a cycle wrap up during the month of May that has been a long time coming. Well, here we go with the Three of Cups again, meaning both third-party intensity and celebration. So be watching for both of those things. I think it's really interesting that it's come up meaning both of those things here twice um, in this like this portion of the reading. As we look at May, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of fast moving energy, but not a lot of it's like a little wind blows, but then you get done and you're still standing on the same ground. So be careful what you say, be careful what you do, because you aren't actually um, it's not a situation where, oh, you're only going to see these people once. So don't worry about it. This is a place where, if nothing else, it's going to stick with you, whatever you say and do. So you're going to have that in your mind indefinitely. And that is perhaps the most powerful reason to make sure you walk the high road. Um, you've got the Eight of Cups in the reverse here. or The two of you have the Eight of Cups in the reverse. The quest has begun for your person according to one of the most recent readings that we have. But one of the problems that they are having is that they can't seem to like, um, there are a couple of things that they're having a hard time doing all at one time. Um, they're having a hard time having the emotion and the logic working in them at the same time. They have a tendency to be able to do one or the other, but not both at the same time. We've seen them kind of making these forays into that thinking cave that they were told to go into in March that was kind of reiterated, you know, for them back in April. And it was this feeling of you really need to go and gather some wisdom to yourself. Um, they've done it a little bit, but every time they go in there, it seems like they learn something they don't feel comfortable with. And it takes a while for them to kind of work through um, the truths. So here, they've got a little bit too much clarity to take this lightly. They have the ability to see, um, but they are having, again, a hard time mixing the logic with the emotion. And they are essentially doing everything they can in the month of, way, of May to quell um, the emotions wherever possible. So you may see them trying to quell communications because they can't seem to communicate and not be emotional at the same time. Um, hmm. But we've got the moon in the reverse. There's something important that they're learning. There's something important that's coming out. And I feel like this is for them. You ha you're you ahead on this one. This is something where maybe you've already started learning this one um, earlier this year. There's something very significant that's coming out. They're figuring it out. And I think it has to do with like how they interpret their surroundings. So watch for that. I think there's a change in the way that you interpret your surroundings um, that has already occurred and now it's going to happen for them. They're just a little bit behind the curve for you. So these are some of the things that we're going to watch for in May. Um, and I will, you know, of course, as we're going through the readings in May, these are some things that we'll be looking for to see um, exactly what happens, especially as we're looking at celebrations coming up. Multiple messages around celebration and the third party and the lessons there. Um, definitely know you're getting to the end of a cycle. They are getting to the end of a cycle. Something new starts as a result of that. So let's look into the you portion of the reading. What is it that you need to focus on as far as your healing and lessons during the month of May? What is your focus Oops! during the month of May? And let's see how many of those I caught a few. Let's see what I dropped. Everything face down. Was, I thought I dropped way more than two cards. It was just two cards and they were both face down. So that means I was just being clumsy. Not that cards were trying to come up for me. Surprising me not at all. I suppose this is why most of the time um, when they fall, they seem to fall face down. So we've got the Nine of Pentacles. Something for you to focus on is your own steadiness. Recognition of 
the steadiness that you can bring to a situation and trying to decide when that's what you want to do. Um, you have some spiritual guidance coming to you that you will be very glad has come to you. I feel like it's maybe a little bit more out of context than you might have expected. So it could be this soulmate before you figure out the importance of them, but I think there's more to it than that. There's also a sense of you getting a little bit nervous as you move into like a place that feels so happy that you almost are afraid it's not real. So um, it's it's like getting really excited about saying something and saying, I'm just not sure. Is this... A, I'm not convinced that I'm, I'm going to be really disappointed if I find out that this was a dream and then I wake up. So the nine of swords is that anxiety. The sun is that happiness that you are um, being presented with. You're encouraged to consider the happiness and allow yourself to jump into it. Even if you do find out it's a dream, spend the time in the dream as happy as possible, you know, um, with the Four of Wands here, this is about turning, like upturning some sort or overturning some sort of um, intentional situation. There's something here about no longer wa walking a same path or no longer following the same rules. This is overturning some expectations. Those expectations could really be your own. Um, with the Two of Cups, this is you bonding. This is your bond with this soulmate. I think this happens in May. I mean, obviously, you could have some where you've already kind of come in contact with them. People's timelines are different. You could have people showing up in June. But um, this is this is the bond. This is the ability for the bond more than anything. This is after this um, energy is forged in you, you are ready. Um, you're ready for something that makes you much happier than what you've experienced in the past. We have the awakening card. This is the recognition in you that it is ready. So this is the judgment, the equivalent of the judgment card in the traditional tarot. And then the awakening here is about you awakening to yourself and recognizing who and what you are and what you've become. With the monarch, this is an actually a beautifully, um, a beautifully balanced masculine energy so this is you giving to yourself and trusting there's a trust in this for yourself that I don't think I have felt in you in the past you're encouraged to engender that to bring it into yourself and remember everyone wants that masculine and feminine energy to be good and balanced to be good and strong um, so that you don't have the negative sides manifesting of, of either of them and everyone's got both so Regardless of what your gender is, you still want your masculine and feminine energies to be nice and balanced. There's transformation that's possible in this, but it's like you're holding the door for your transformation as opposed to um, it getting in under the wire. So you've got some Queen of Swords energy here and some Seven of Swords energy. This is interesting because it has you um, confronting some fears. The Seven of Swords talks about those fears. It talks about being a little bit uncomfortable, about not having a trust for the situation. And the Queen of Swords is talking about that's fine. If you don't feel like you trust the situation just yet, there is not a need for you to rush forward. Um, in a lot of cases, there um, the decision does not have to be made as quickly as um as that so if you are able to hold the decision off that may be giving you some trouble this is a good time to do it and by the way you are going to have a decision that's like that so we've got the nymph of wands here that is a feeling of almost sadness almost sadness um, for something that has to be left behind for something that has to change but with the star again that sense that we've seen in some of the previous readings to be sure keep going the in the right direction or in the same direction because you are definitely doing some things that um you are are leading you down a path toward happiness but you are not definitely going to see that there's a sense of it being very difficult to tell kind of what's on that path in some cases um nothing against the path just sometimes they're winding paths and you don't have the whole perspective as you're taking the whole trip Feel like we have at least one more card that needs to come out here yep we've got a seven of wands so the seven of wands in the reverse is a card of doubting oneself and the empress is saying it kind of catches that doubt and says no you know what 
you're ready. So it's going to be a sense of self-doubt, but it's also going to be a feeling of catching yourself relatively quickly and saying, no, I'm good on this. I've, I've done the training. I've done what's required. I'm ready to go. And yes, there may be some difficulty along the way, but I'm ready to go. And it really is truly ready to go. Um, the jitters are basically all you see with that seven of wands. Um, so there's change that happens for you here and you are invited to kind of walk directly into it across the month of May. Open, embracing sort of energy once again for you um, and allowing for people's words to maybe weigh upon you. You have things that you're, you are becoming something during the course of this month. So I'll just put it that way. Let's get you, um, I'm not going to extend this. Um, I don't know that I like to extend the monthly outlooks that much. So I think I'm going to go ahead and leave this as it is. Um, it gives us a good feel for the type of energy that's coming in. But let's get you an Oracle card to just kind of see what else you need to know during the month of May. What else do you need to be aware of or be thinking of? All right, we have release rigidity valerian okay so valerian root is kind of um you can make tea with it you can take it in capsules it's a kind of an alternate to a uh, muscle relaxer it's a little bit of, it releases rigidity and uses a little bit different of a mechanism but basically um this is the same type of message that you were already getting here about being open so being rigid is going to work against you so the recommendation you are getting is to release that rigidity, just like you took some valerian root or you drank some valerian root tea. Um, the idea is to kind of let go and allow for things to, to shift in the ways that they need to shift. It's not necessarily an easy thing to do, but it is an important thing to do. And in this energy, it's going to be especially helpful because it'll help you to um, gather as many of those opportunities to you as possible, like we were talking about over here. So May, May looks like it's good. May looks like it's got a lot of interesting sort of energy coming. Um, not necessarily comfortable for your person, but ultimately will be good. Ultimately, closing up cycles, moving into new places, and starting something new there's a feeling of um, wrapping something up that implies pushing you into something new and that's an energy we haven't we haven't felt in a few months so um, let's go ahead and wrap this up here thanks for being here with me always and I'll, again today as we look at may's energy and tomorrow we will um, jump into it again and i will see you then